Welcome back to the Scottabye channel and this is Scott. Well, a couple of days ago, I did a video entitled Jet KVM is Awesome. And this time I want to go ahead and do a follow on video that I'm entitling Jet KVM Use Case. So the Jet KVM has multiple ways to power the system in which it is connected to. And one is to use the Jet KVM integrated wake on land capability, which is part of the Jet KVM web page. Secondly, they have an optional ATX power and control board, and this is designed to be fitted into a back panel of an ATX system. Uh, first of all, this expansion port that you see here is the RJ11 that goes back to the RJ11 uh, extensions or expansion port on the Jet KVM. And then here it's going to have a jumper over to the front pin headers for things like power and the reset button. And then we have an optional DC power control, and this is really meant for those mini PCs. And we have a DC power in uh, for a barrel connector from a typical uh, mini PC power supply. And then we have a DC power out. And then again, it has the same RJ11 expansion connector here that can be connected back to the Jet KVM. And then we have some wake on land options above and beyond what we see on the Jet KVM. So first of all, this is what the Jet KVM wake on land option looks like. You simply click wake on land. You can add yourself a system. It doesn't have to be the attached system, but it could simply be a list of systems that you want to perform a wake on land on. Secondly, and I've done a video on this one before on the channel, we have this particular application I'm going to talk about here in just a second. And then we have Net Alert X, and it also has a wake on land capability on it as well. So why do I not recommend using wake on land since there are many wake on land options? Well, Wake on LAN is absolutely great, and I mean that truly. And you can watch that um, video that I created a few months back called UpSnap, a Wake on LAN utility. That was that second interface we saw on the previous screen. And then I have another video entitled Home Lab Network Monitoring, where I look at a few different utilities, but the key utility there is NetAlert X. And NetAlert X has a built-in wake on land capability. And then my Dell XPS 8930, which is the test system that I've been using in the last video, and also to uh, put together some notes for this video, says that it has integrated NIC wake on land support. And also I have a 10 gigabit per second NIC in that machine as well which has wake on LAN support. So theoretically, I have two ways to wake that device with the wake on LAN magic packet. However, the BIOS does not properly support providing standby power to the PCI Express bus to support wake on LAN. So it really doesn't matter if my network interface cards support wake on LAN if I'm not getting standby power to the PCI Express bus. And I know this because when the machine is powered down, if I look at the back panel and I have a uh, plug plugged into one of those NICs, I'm not seeing any flashing lights. If I did see flashing lights and it was a wake on LAN compatible controller also, then I would know that I had a good possibility of being able to wake on LAN. So Wake on LAN also is somewhat limited in that it does not work across VLANs. That is that they are broadcast packets and they only work on the same network or same address range. 
And I have a solution that works on networks and systems that do not support Wake on LAN. And that was really my main reason for putting this short video together. So what's my power solution? Well, first of all, if you don't feel like you need an ability to remotely power the system, then you don't really need a power solution. That is, if your plan is to connect up your Jet KVM to a machine that's already booted and all you're going to do is reboot it, you're fine. But if that machine is powered down, you need a way to power it up. And the Jet KVM power accessories are great, but they involve a certain amount of installation, as you could see earlier. And so I enable the BIOS AC recovery option to power on. And this is a screenshot of that Dell 8930 BIOS where I went into the advanced settings. And in the advanced settings, they have something that's called uh, power options. And under power options, one of the options is AC recovery. And it was previously set to power off. But when I clicked on it, it gives me this pop-up when the options are power off, power on, and last power state. So what this means is it means that if I shut the machine down and the AC recovery is power off, if for some reason the plug that it's plugged into loses power and then it gains power back later, nothing happens. If it's set to power on, and the connection to power on the other side of the plug is providing no power and then suddenly does provide power, the machine will boot up automatically. And last power state basically means that if it was off previously, before losing power, it will be off. And if it was on previously, before losing power, it will be back on. So I use a Zoo's Zen 14 dual outdoor Z-Wave smart outlet. And that device looks like this. It's got this really great flat plug that fits in the back of my PDUs. I have two of these. One I've got in my rack that's running my VMS Mist and VMS Rain um, Inca servers. And so uh, if those servers were to lock up for any particular reason, I could power down one of these smart plug outlets and power it back up again. And since the BIOS is set to power on, it would effectively reboot that machine. So in summary, since I have an existing home automation hub with the Z-Wave mesh, the Zoo's outlet works great as a power solution. And the Zoo Zen 14 outlet has two separately controllable smart plugs and it is ETL rated all the way to 15 amps. And if you're interested in the specific ratings, you can take a look at those online. And the Zoo Zen 14 is a solidly built and even outdoor rated device. It's got a nice thick plug and a nice sealed case, making it ideal for a fairly robust device. And this outlet is also long distance ready, meaning that it can support Z-Wave connections that are on the edge of your uh, Z-Wave um, mesh without any problems. And it also supports the Z-Wave S2 authenticated security protocol. And the $35 price makes this a good value. And in particularly in my case, where I've got VMS Mist and VMS Rain being managed by this one plug. Now in the case of the Dell, I have a, another one, another plug just like this. And that particular plug is going to manage the Dell system plus one other system I have. And this outlet does require a Z-Wave hub, and it works great with Home Assistant, Hubitat, and Samsung SmartThings. 
Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.